The Thunderstorm Generator, invented by Australian geochemist and Vortex Fusion specialist Malcolm Bendel, is a waste energy conversion system designed to be retrofitted to any existing combustion engine or carbon emission source. This includes, but is not limited to, installations that utilise petrol, diesel, natural gas, coal and other carbon-based fuels. By retrofitting the thunderstorm generator to our existing infrastructure and integrating it into new internal combustion technologies, carbon emissions, including carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and hydrocarbons, can be reduced to zero or to a negligible percentage. This is accompanied by a significant increase in oxygen, resulting in the final composition of the exhaust being similar to that of atmospheric readings of clean air. In addition to remediating the carbon exhaust emissions, the thunderstorm generator has been shown to improve the fuel consumption and power output of the engine significantly. These combined functions are achieved not with rare metal catalysts or costly or dangerous materials, but instead by a little-known but well-supported phenomena variously termed ball lightning, plasmoids, exotic vacuum objects, EVOs, structured plasma fields, or structured self-contained electromagnetic fields. These self-sustaining structured plasma entities are formed via a process called water bubble captation. In its current pre-production prototype phase, the device consists of three primary units. The final unit of the system is retrofitted to the air intake and the exhaust of the existing engine or installation. A basic overview of the system. Unit 1. The Ionizer. The first unit of the system becomes the new air intake for the entire system. It consists of a chamber containing a UV bulb of a specific wavelength. Air is vacuumed through this chamber and ionized by the bulb. This step is performed simply to set up more favorable conditions for the process which occurs in the second unit of the system. Unit 2, the bubbler, or plasmoid generator. The second unit of the system consists of a novel water bubble generator and cavitation device. Ionized air is vacuumed through a porous membrane into a water-filled chamber, utilizing the existing engine's measured compression and exhaust strokes. In this way, microscopic ionized bubbles of air and water gases are formed and are vacuumed through the water, which is packed with steel wool to further micronize the bubbles, to the upper part of the chamber, which contains no water. On the reverse stroke of the engine's pistons, the bubbles are collapsed. If the bubbles are within the parameters necessary for viable cavitation, in other words, if the bubble cavities are of the correct volume and spherical geometry at the moment they are collapsed, they will symmetrically implode to form a toroidal electromagnetic field or plasma structure, which has the ability to sustain its form and can be used to perform work, including the atomic reconstruction of carbon-based exhaust streams to atmospheric levels of oxygen and nitrogen similar in composition to pure clean air. This is the process of water bubble cavitation. The ball lining or plasmoid is the true secret of the thunderstorm generator and the specific process behind what people previously called cold fusion or low energy nuclear reactions. These are now becoming defunct and imprecise terms, but for a long time they were used to describe elements of the same process in other historical experiments and systems. The true process of water bubble cavitation, as employed in the thunderstorm generator and Malcolm Bendel's future atomic reconstruction technology applications, does not produce a nuclear byproduct, and the, the reactions are not cold. They occur at extremely high pressures and temperatures, which, however, are safely contained within the context of this system. The newly formed plasmoids feed on surrounding water vapors and gases, and they utilize this potential energy to grow their own plasma structure. And then along with the remaining water gases and vapors, they are vacuumed in a stream through the outlet at the top of the chamber into the final unit of the retrofit system the thunderstorm generator itself. Unit 3, the thunderstorm generator, or Vajra. The final unit, the thunderstorm generator, or Vajra, is the reactor of the system. The exhaust waste stream, primarily consisting of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and hydrocarbons, is atomically reconstructed during this phase, reforming the elemental matter, potential energy, into more useful elements in the context of this system, primarily significantly increased levels of oxygen, but also hydrogen and other elements. We will explain this process briefly in more depth after giving an overview of the basic construction. The complete unit consists of two sets of three nested hollow spheres. The two outer of each set of spheres connected via two nested pipes. The device body, although materially very simple, 
is constructed entirely of 304 stainless steel or similar alloys, and relies on precision geometry and annealing to produce its intended results. The design and manufacture process is similar to that of a musical instrument, although it could also be compared to a precision-tuned engine or turbine. Geometry and resonance are the most fundamental considerations. With modern automated systems to deal with complex metalwork and welding, the thunderstorm generator is low-cost to mass manufacture and has global applications in every single major industry, including but not limited to power generation, automotive, mining, aerospace, agriculture, health, and environmental remediation. The basic principle of the device simply works on the same principles as a natural thunderstorm. Caused by a relatively minor differential in temperature and pressure between the air and water out at sea, expansion and contraction, fundamental forces opposing one another, two great opposing vortexes are formed to attempt to equalize this polarity, one rotating clockwise and contracting or imploding through the center of the structure and the other rotating counterclockwise and expanding around the structure. These two opposing forces grow and sustain their conjugate vortex structure for some time and can generate millions of megawatts of power. At the center of the thunderstorm, we find the eye of the storm, where motion, frequency of rotation, ceases completely. This plane of equilibrium lying at the center of two opposing vortexes is the zero point of the structure. Just as in the case of plasmoid generation and the thunderstorm process generated in this third unit of the system, where we are able to reliably observe and replicate this same phenomena on a safe and self-contained smaller scale. The geometry and fluid dynamics that can be observed in the natural phenomena of a thunderstorm are the fundamental considerations which have gone into the design of Malcolm Bendel's thunderstorm generator and his other future technologies. The cold plasmoids, water gas, and vapor stream is directed in a clockwise flow direction into the lower center-nested sphere, which is connected to the center nested pipe and opposing center sphere of the unit. At the other end of the unit, the hot exhaust stream is directed in the opposing direction in a counterclockwise flow direction this time, through the cavity surrounded by the outer nested hollow spheres and pipes. Although the two opposing vortexes are separated by the walls of the metal pipe, ball lightning structures are homeostatic, completely self-contained entities It's well established that they are able to move through and interact through solid metal. This is an electromagnetic phenomena. These two opposing vortexes, together as a singular conjugate structure, form the self-contained thunderstorm. A thunderstorm is fundamentally just a larger form or expression of a plasmoid or an electromagnetic field structure like these. At the point of equilibrium between the two vortexes lies the plane of inertia, and situated on this plane lies the zero point. When we structure and maintain a zero point or a gravity well in this way by forming two counter-opposing vortexes, one where we are accelerating or expanding the frequency of matter and one where we are reversing or contracting the frequency of matter, when the matter, in this scenario, the carbon exhaust waste stream, passes through this point of equilibrium, it will be momentarily, from our own frame of reference, stripped of its frequency altogether. It becomes amorphous, direct current, potential energy without elemental form or frequency. As this direct current, disassociated energy is ejected out of the expounding outer vortex on the opposing side of the plane of equilibrium, it will immediately return to motion, reforming back into the most convenient arrangement of elements and isotopes. The product of this reaction is primarily dependent on the surrounding conditions, the properties of the self-contained thunderstorm, and the potential energy available from the previously deconstructed elements. In the case of the thunderstorm generator, we find that the carbon exhaust waste is primarily being transmuted into oxygen, although independent analysis conducted by Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project shows a more intricate and complete process of stepwise transmutation occurring with a range of elements typical to ball lightning or plasmoid fusion found during SEM and EDS analysis. The implications of these observations presents the possibility for safe and controlled atomic fusion of practically any element in future applications of these technologies. In the thunderstorm generator system, hydrogen is also produced, and although this can be utilized as an effective fuel for the engine, and the thunderstorm generator does produce a dramatic increase in engine efficiency and decrease in fuel consumption, these effects are primarily caused by the ball lightning structures, or plasmoids, causing a net gain in energy in the system. In simple terms, the structured plasma acts itself as another source of fuel that can react with the positive ignition charge of the spark plug. 
What has been described so far is only one half of the complete process occurring in the thunderstorm generator unit. The bore lining or plasmoid structures have another function in the system other than forming part of the constitution of the cold clockwise input stream of the thunderstorm. They also serve another electromagnetic purpose. When the device is precisely constructed and annealed, the temperature differential between the inner and outer nested spheres can be significant. The ball lining or plasmoid structures will act to keep the greater system in homeostasis, and they will create an ionized path and arc between the outer and center nested spheres, attempting to equalize these polarized potentials. Again, the equalizing principle of the thunderstorm is demonstrated just in miniature. And again, a zero point is formed at the plane of equilibrium between the two opposing forces of the conjugate form of the plasmoid. When matter passes through this zero point, atomic reconstruction or fusion occurs. The thunderstorm generator has two primary processes, but they both work on exactly the same principles. Although many different experimental water bubble cavitation reactors have been constructed and ball lining or plasmoid phenomena has been observed and studied globally in numerous different systems, independent analysis shows that the thunderstorm generator can reliably and consistently produce the effect by dramatically increased orders of magnitude compared to any other similar reactors that have been studied, despite the novel device being far less complex and costly to manufacture and retrofit to already existing technologies and to integrate directly into future engine and installation designs. Recent trials have shown that the metal of the third unit of the system, the thunderstorm generator, as well as the metal inside the combustion chamber of the engine itself, can actually become conditioned with plasmoids, storing the ball lining charges within the atomic cubic structure of the iron and the steel for some time. It's been observed in multiple systems and during public and scientific demonstrations that after being run for an initial period with the full system attached, so that the ball lining or plasmoids can first be generated and have time to infuse in the metal of the system, the first two units of the system can later be detached, and the thunderstorm generator unit, uh, the third unit, or the Vajra, can continue to do the work of the full system on its own for a period of time. This presents the opportunity to further optimize the device in future so that the bubbler and the ionizer unit could be used as a separate static installation, similar to an electric car charger, to periodically charge the thunderstorm generator Vajra, which would alone be contained in the moving vehicle or primary installation. This application reduces the size and expense of the system and presents a host of further opportunities to utilize existing oil and gas commercial and retail infrastructure. Applications of the thunderstorm generator The applications for the thunderstorm generator are synonymous with the applications of the combustion engine or coal power plant there is a critical and universal need for such a device. There is an immediate global demand for an effective and affordable method which can solve the carbon emissions issue. This device presents the solution to this issue in an elegant, clean, and cost-effective form. Meanwhile, its advent does not need to disrupt existing primary industries such as the fuel and automotive sectors. Instead, the thunderstorm generator allows for the clean and effective utilization of existing vehicles, infrastructure, and various current and future natural fuel sources for many decades to come. It presents a net win for the entire supply chain as well as consumers and governments. Malcolm Bendel has designed and painted several other technologies based on the same fundamental principles utilized in the thunderstorm generator. This includes the direct matter to energy drive or implosive turbine for power generation, atomic reconstruction, and structured plasma-based propulsion for land, air, on water, underwater, and space applications. We'll not explore this application in this presentation for the sake of time, but needless to say, the thunderstorm generator and the principles of Malcolm Bedell's atomic reconstruction technology present the beginning of a new industrial revolution. Thank you for your time. We hope you found this presentation informative and would like to come on board to be involved in the immediate global rollout of this technology.